Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with talented saxophonist and composer Caroline Davis. Following the release of her much-praised 2012 debut, Live, Work, and Play, the alto saxophonist has relocated from Chicago to New York and got to work on an ambitious project that has been germinating for seven years. To honor her eight-year residency in Chicago, she combines spoken stories and original compositions on a new CD called Doors, Chicago Storylines. It will be released by Eyes and Eyes Records on November 6, 2012. 2015, and the inspiration for Doors came in 2007 while Davis was teaching a course on the history of Chicago jazz at Northwestern University. She found that between 1980 and 2000, it was virtually uncharted territory. She conducted all of the interviews from 15 musicians she'd found helpful and influential when she was coming up on the Chicago scene, and those include Art Davis, George Flutus, Bobby Broom, and the great Vaughn Freeman, and they talked to her about their experiences during that time, and she weaves together a very important historical document on this album. She spoke with Neon Jazz about the creation of this album and a little bit more. Dig this interview, my friends. So I listened to it, and it's very interesting. It's, it's something that I don't think that I've probably ever heard the way that you put it together. So let's just start at the top here. Talk to me a little bit about this project, how it came about, your roots in Chicago, just kind of an overview of everything. I moved to Chicago in 2004, and I was there getting a Ph.D. at Northwestern University, and I eventually taught a course there that we designed called um, The History of Chicago Jazz, and it was for undergraduates who were going to school there, not necessarily music majors, just undergraduates at at Northwestern. And um, part of the curriculum that I developed was going through kind of each decade and seeing what was going on in the community in terms of venues and music that people were writing about and things like that. And when we got to the 80s and the 90s, um, there was a, quite a lack of literature available for us to read. And so what we did was we brought in some friends of ours that were performing in Chicago who had been around during that time period. Um, And we asked them what their experiences were during that particular point in time and where they were hanging out, what kind of music they were seeing, what elder statesmen were available to talk to and check out in the scene. Um, And that's kind of where the project was born because it was pretty interesting to me. I just knew, I knew a lot of the people who are around here during or around Chicago during that time and I looked up to a lot of them, and I just thought it would be really inspiring for me to um, pair my own original music with the stories. So you were kind of part journalist, part musician. So yeah, mm-hmm. how, how did it feel to be kind of a, a purveyor, an initial documenter of that time, and get the music together? Um, well, I've been, I've been doing a lot of similar work um, when when I was getting my PhD there. Uh, like interviewing people and asking them about their process of improvisation. So I kind of knew, and I took a lot of ethnomusicology classes um, in, at the graduate level at, at Northwestern. And so I kind of knew some strategies for interviewing people and knew some strategies for how to give them the space to answer the questions, and stuff, which is just such a hard thing to do. You know, you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. a hard thing to do. It's It's hard to ask people questions without leading them on, I guess, yeah. if that makes any sense. Absolutely. Um, or it's hard to ask questions without giving them an answer. But, you know, like with Vaughn Freeman, that's a huge thing to document. He was such a big fixture in Chicago. What was it like with him to, to figure some things out and have a good uh, talk about things? Well, I was fortunate enough to go fairly often to see him at his session at the new apartment lounge over on 75th and Martin Luther King Drive there. there. And uh, seeing him in the flesh and listening to him play every Tuesday pretty much was such a gift. And also he was was such a character. I I guess I wouldn't say character. He was such a loving spirit. He was so um, inspiring. But also at the same time, he, he was very open to giving you the space to develop and and encouraging that. He's such a great 
person for encouragement. He's just so encouraging. And I really appreciated that. As someone coming up in Chicago, um, he was very instrumental in my development there. And I didn't really talk to him specifically about his experience during that time period. I just kind of listened to him play, and I feel like I heard a lot of what he went through in, in his sound and the way he played and his language. You know, whenever you go into things like this and you're really printing back layers of musicians and story, what were some of the more surprising things that you discovered along the way? That's a good question. Well, I it wasn't so much of a surprise, but I guess it was really cool. I guess it is kind of a surprise, but it's really neat to see how people older than me are just like me. Um, somehow we we separate people who are older or younger than us, and we think that they don't really have a lot of the same experiences, and they don't really specifically have the same experiences that we do. But it's so it's very similar. Like they went out to their own group of clubs and they hung until like four o'clock in the morning, and there was a space to go hang. You know, there's a place there called the Chicago Bulls. It was a club at the end of Lincoln Avenue and every, a lot of musicians used to go there and hang out and it's the same for us like we we did the same thing you know there would be places for us to go and hang out when I was going around a lot in Chicago and I think that's very similar in some ways surprising but also it's very nice to know that they went through the same things that we did you know yeah. just different names of places different people and different names of places but the same sort of situations you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So how much fun was this to put together? Oh, it was fun. It was a, it was very tedious because I, you know, I interviewed about 16 people and each one of those interviews was about two hours long and some of them were a little over two hours. So going through each one of the interviews and finding the best stories and the best statements to put on the album was pretty difficult. For me, and that's why it took me two years to get through the whole thing. Um, yeah. And then mixing and editing their speech was also really difficult, and I have to give a lot of props to Brian Schwab for helping me with that because he put in a lot of extra hours to make sure that things sounded good. Um, yeah. Because some of the interviews were like in rooms with loud air conditioners, and some of the <laughs> interviews were outside, and there were birds chirping, garbage trucks going down alleyways and, like, airplanes and times, and we had to, like, you know, kind of mix some of that out, which was tough. Yeah, it is tough. It really is. Talk to me a little bit about the promotion, touring. What What's kind of your game plan for all of that? Yeah, so it's coming out November 6th, and we're doing a CD release party here in New York on November 5th at the Jazz Gallery, which I'm pretty excited about. It's a great venue, and... Um, I'll be playing with musicians who I've been working with out here, not the people on the record, but people who I've been playing with out here, and they've been playing that music and helping me put that out into the world in New York. Um, and then in Chicago, we have a few dates there, too, at, at Andy's, which is, a, I'm sure you've heard of Andy's, but it's a club that's downtown in Chicago, and then we're also playing at Constellation on the 5th of December, so that'll be in first week of December, and that's going to be with the band that played on the record. So. Thanks again for talking to me about another project. I appreciate it. Oh, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New York, Kansas City, Chicago, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Caroline for her love of Chicago and the jazz craft overall. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store, or visit the neonjazz.blogspot.com for all things Neon Jazz. And until next time, enjoy the music, my friends. Neon Jazz.